Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. I've been to some turner shops who actually will have a sign up saying that life is too short to turn bad wood. Well, I've got to tell you a story about that, and that is, well, our club has a once a month get together on a Saturday morning where we can do rough and tumble hands-on stuff. In this last one, we're sharpening chainsaws and cutting up wood and, and uh, things of that sort. As we're cleaning up, uh, there was a piece of wood left on the ground, and, and I asked uh, the fellow who had been sawing it up, well, aren't, aren't you going to take this piece too? It looks like it's got a nice burl on it. Well, he says, yeah, it's got a burl. It's actually got a pair of burls, but it's small, and it's got a chainsaw cut accidentally in the in through the burl, so no, I'm just going to throw it away. Life is too short. Well, I took it home, and guess what? It can be a beautiful small bowl. I did have to sacrifice the one bowl with the chainsaw cut, but yeah, it has some voids, but can't dispute the character behind this bowl. So let's turn it. So here we are at the lathe. This is after spending some quality time at the bandsaw. I cut off the burl that had the chainsaw gash. I also cut a slant in the base to give me a flat side opposite the burl and with the burl centered. Now the burl is pressed against my spike faceplate after eyeballing the placement after viewing the obvious voids and other defects. I start rough rounding with my large wool gouge. My objective is to establish where the wood can be round without cutting out all the voids and all the other irregularities. I do have to stay away from the faceplate spikes, and that little bit of wood will easily come off later. After rounding off the bottom, I dig out the loose bark from the voids, then move on to cutting a dovetail tenon. Now reverse the mount into a chuck, but keep the life center for insurance. First, take off the extra at the top to establish the rim, then trim the outside, including a clef, to guide my eyeballs for the bowl profile. Then start hollowing. This is awkward because I am keeping the live center in place for now. My fear is that with all the voids, the bowl will fly apart. The live center will not prevent this type of explosion, but other catch prevention is comforting. My tenon is weak in this burl wood. I need a little more. I reverse the bowl again, pressing against the chuck with the live center. With this mount, I can refine the tenon with the visibility of the current wood surface. Reverse again. Since the axis probably shifted a little with the mount change, I take my skew as a scraper to the exterior to correct any shift and to refine the surface. Then again hollow with my bowl, large bowl gouge. This is tough going. With a gouge, I like to ride the bevel. However, with all these voids, the bevel is interrupted. 
I switched to a round nose scraper, no bevel needed for it. Our club's challenge this month is a bowl straight off the lathe tools. No sanding. So I have to take a break and leave the base nub. I'm back, this time with coal jaws. There are other ways to do the foot. My next choice would be a flat face plate or a padded round plug. Both continue to use the life center and require just a tad of sanding at the removal from the lathe. However, with a cold jaw mount, I can attack the foot completely with my spindle gouge and sanding while on the lathe. However, with a cold jaw mount, I can attack the foot completely with my spindle gouge and sanding while on the lathe. The only thing left after sanding is to give it a bath in walnut oil. This brightens the wood and really brings out the burl figure. This completes a bowl that never should have been turned. But why not? This bowl has character to spare. It will never be mistaken for a plastic bowl. Voids? So what? I like it. Life is too short to bypass beauty and character. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my website as well as on YouTube. Please spread the word by telling your friends about my weekly videos. I also appreciate comments and questions. Please wear your full face shield. I know I'm nagging whenever the lathe is running. Are you wearing yours while at the lathe?